so freely from above Lifting gratitude and praises Or compassion so amazing Lord, we've come to give you thanks For all you've done Because of your love We're forgiven Because of your love
Good morning. Let's stand and sing together. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a fountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Your love is surprising. I can feel it rising. All the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time that I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God song rising up in me.
We're going to let you be seated as we watch a video together. His praises one day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelled among men my example is he the word became flesh and the light shined among us the glory revealed Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Mary, he carried my sins far away. And rising, he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. took the nails for me and living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away and rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day Is coming one day the skies with his glories will shine wonderful day my beloved one bringing my savior jesus jesus is mine oh death could not hold him and the grave could not keep him from rising again Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. And rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Jesus is mine, and living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified, freely forever, one day he's coming, a glorious day, what a glorious day. Oh, 
glorious day. In the morning, you listen to us in the middle of the day, and you listen to us in the middle of the night, and we're so grateful for that. Today, we come to you to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, for those on our prayer list, uh, those who may be sitting with us today that are either struggling with an illness or have 
of some of the uh, hurts and pains of life. And we ask you to touch them and to care for them. We're asking you, Lord, to guide doctors and nurses and to heal people who are struggling right now. Help them with their bodies. Help them to get back on track. And, Lord, we're praying for people who don't know Christ and people who are outside of the church that at one time maybe went to church, maybe knew something about Christ but have fallen away. And we ask you, Lord, to bring them back. We want them to see you. We want them to know you. We want them to draw close to you and to feel your love and your grace. And so we pray for them, Lord. Help us to be a conduit of your love. Help us to share what we know about Jesus with other people. Help us to share our story with you, Lord, because I know people need to hear it. Our story is different than our neighbor's story about Christ, and we pray, Lord, we'd share that with others. We're so thankful, Lord, for all you've given us because you have blessed us. So many good things have come into our lives, and you've helped us deal with the bad things, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, glad to see you all here this morning. We hope you're doing well. Uh, we hope that you came uh, prepared to worship because that's a big thing. Uh, sometimes people don't do that. People stumble into church and they don't uh, prepare for worship. We hope that you're ready. Uh, I always have believed that attitude was uh, almost everything. Attitude was very important, that we had the right attitude uh, and, and the right thoughts uh, when we come in to worship and do different things. I remember a story someplace with his favorite horse and his dog, so he put his favorite horse in his trailer and put his dog up uh, with him in the pickup, which is what a lot of guys be helped and so he shoots the dog uh, finally finds the, the the cowboy in the bushes and goes up to the cowboy and his gun is still smoking from shooting the dog okay and he asked the guy how you doing he says oh I've never felt better in my whole life so, <laughs> always a good answer <laughs> uh, I want to share with you some thoughts. Uh, last week we talked about the God of compassion. I want to talk about the God of patience, about God's ability to be patient uh, with people, be patient with us. I've experienced it. I know, I know how, God, how patient God can be. Uh, I know what kind of person I have been at times and how God had to overlook that. God didn't wink at my sin. He wasn't happy with my sin, my wrongdoing, but God was patient with me, gave me his grace. Second uh, Peter chapter 3, verse 9, if you would turn there. <clears throat> and I'm going to be sharing a lot of verses today. Um, sorry about that, but uh, that's what we're going to do. So just keep up with me. You've got them up on the screen. Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord uh, is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Lord, we thank you that you're calling us to repentance. We're thanking that you give us an opportunity to, to, to come to Christ that many people have several chances to know you and to come to you. And the reason for that is not because we deserve it, but because you are patient with us. You are merciful, and we thank you for that, Lord. And we ask you to help us to realize how important that is. What a wonderful uh, attribute of God, characteristics of God that, that is. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Patience and long-suffering are often interchanged with each other in Scripture. I, I like the, the term long-suffering because it, it tells us that God is patient, long-suffering. Uh, he expresses that through his goodness and his forbearance as he endures, as he endures the sinner's persistence and hard-heartedness and wickedness. God, God uh, is long-suffering towards us. God is patient towards us even though he sees our sin, even though he sees our wrongdoing, even though he sees how stubborn that we can be. God is still patient, and he suffers long with that, hoping, hoping for what? That we will repent. He tirelessly waits for us to repent. 
uh, rather than visit us with immediate judgment. If God, God in his justice could just uh, visit us as we sin with his judgment, with his wrath, God could do that. I believe it would be well within God's uh, nature to do that, but God, part of his nature and his character is that God is patient and he is long-suffering. God endures man's godless, uh, heartless behavior, hoping in time that we might repent and follow Jesus. Please don't underestimate how important that is, that God is patient with people. God is long-suffering uh, towards us because of uh, he, over, he doesn't overlook our sin, but he gives us grace. He gives us mercy, and I need that, and you need that. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 where Peter uh, mentions something about Paul, but says, Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. This is an important text because it talks about Peter commanding his readers to listen to Paul. That Paul was inspired by God and that Peter was telling them, if you have any reservations, you can listen to what Paul says because he is inspired by God and this wisdom comes from God. But he says there that God's patience uh, for many uh, means salvation. It means that God wasn't patient with us, we might not be saved, many of us. If God wasn't patient with you, if God wasn't long-suffering towards you, if God didn't put up with what's going on in your life, then God would judge you at that moment and you would be lost. But God is not that way. God is patient, hoping, hoping that you will repent. And I want to encourage you today. You to repent. God's calling you to come. God cares about you. God shows great compassion towards you, and God is. The state of our country, a state of things that we're doing in our country, like abortion, and I've wondered how God holds back, how God doesn't judge, how God doesn't bring this whole thing to an end, and someday he will, but God shows his great compassion and his love for people in his patience, and I, I, I just, I, I glory in that, I love that, but that patience and that long suffering is undeserved and unappreciated by many. I hope you appreciate the fact that God is patient with you. Even as a believer, he wants you to grow up in Christ. He wants you to get stronger in Christ. And sometimes as Christians, we continue to make mistakes, and God has to overlook that. God has to be patient with us so that we can grow up. Thank the Lord. The Lord allowed me to grow up. The Lord allowed me to get stronger and get stronger in my faith, that God didn't judge me in my foolishness as a new Christian. God is truly patient and deserves for us to have the same virtue. He desires for us to have the same virtue in our Christian lives. God wants you to be patient too. Not only is God patient, and that is a great virtue, a great characteristic of God, God wants us to have that vir same virtue. He wants us to be patient with him and with others. Uh, Galatians 5.22, if you turn there, Galatians 5.22 but it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. And again, the fruit of the Spirit are the characteristics of Christ. If we're going to be Christ-like, these are things that need to be evident in our life, things we need to be. God wants us to have patience with other people. God wants us to be wait upon him, have patience with him, and a really important uh, thought. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, love is patient and love is kind. When God talks about his, uh, his definition of love, he mentions right in the middle of that, uh, right at the beginning of that, that love is patient, and love is patient. Love is patient with others. And this is a difficult thing because we want God to be patient with us. We want God to give us all the grace that we want. 
But then we look at others and we say, hey, what is his problem? What's her problem? What's going on with him? What's going on with her? I just can't believe that. Why don't they grow up? Why don't they act right? Uh, God, God's style of love wants us to be patient with others. We can easily make the case that we are all imperfect. At least I am. We're all flawed. We're marred by wrongdoing. So we must be careful to be patient with others. Remembering that we are not where we should be. Please remember that. You're not where you ought to be. I hope you're a good Christian. I hope you're growing in your faith. I hope you're excited about being in Jesus. I hope you love to be in worship. I hope you're looking forward to heaven. I hope you have your faith, hope, and trust in God. But the fact is that we're not where we ought to be. We ought to be further along. I know I need to grow more. I know I need to be more like, like Jesus. I've mentioned many times I need to learn to love people like Jesus loved people. I'm trying, but some of you are just really difficult. Okay, I, I don't know what to say, but you're hard to love. I, I need, and I've said it many times, I need to forgive the way the Lord forgave. The Lord forgave and he forgot it, moved on, didn't remember it anymore. And I, I, I know I have a brain that remembers things, but I need to truly forgive people so I can work with them, I can pray for them, and wish the best for them. And in praying for them, asking God to do good things for them. And if they're not saved, I need to be able to pray that they'll be saved. I want the very best for them. Well, I've not forgiven people if I can't pray for them. And so I really need to work on that. I need to work on that. But in doing that, then I need to learn to be what? To be patient. When we all get to heaven, we will all be perfect. Thank the Lord for that. I've got my own thoughts of what that means, but uh, we'll all be perfect. And no one will annoy, no, annoy anyone in heaven. Now think about that. When you get to heaven, you're not going to be annoyed by anybody. And I see you looking around. Don't look around other people. Okay, I can see that. Don't, don't do that. It's bad. You know, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the fact is we get to heaven, it's going to be a perfect place, it's going to be perfect people, and we're not going to, we're going to put the toilet paper roll back on, we should put it on, all those kinds of important things that, we, that don't happen. Put the top back on the new toothpaste, isn't that a big one? And you go in, who left the top off the toothpaste? There's only two people in the house. <laughs> going to be a little... <laughs> uh, that's why you need to put cameras up in your house, stop that from happening. Uh, I thank the Lord for, for the people over the years who were patient with me and I'm, I'm serious about this, as a heart attack, uh, they gave me God's grace. They allowed me to, to grow up and to make mistakes. And I thank the Lord for that. As a pastor, I know at times they must have shook their head. They must have times they thought, oh, boy. But they gave me God's grace. And they, they took care of me and helped me to grow up. God has given me his grace, and other people have given it uh, to me. And I need to be able to give that to others and be patient with others. And that means people in your own household, too, folks. Sometimes that's the hardest people to be patient with, the people that we should love, right? That's the people that we really need to shower our love on. Uh, we need to really overlook sometimes things that they do mess up and just say, you know what, you screwed up, but I still love you. Don't do it again. Okay. Um, <laughs> last, we need to be reminded of the instruction that James gave on patience in James chapter 5. James 5, if you turn there, uh, verses 7 through 11. James chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. And I, I've said this much, but you, you need to read the book of James. Uh, once a year, you need to be in the book of James. Uh, full of practical wisdom, says all kinds of good stuff that we need to know. One of those books you need to go back again and again and take a look at. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. How patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other because the Lord's coming is near. I mean, excuse me, that's not right. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, an example of a patience is the face, in face of suffering. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, uh, we consider blessed those who pers have persevered. You have heard of Job perseverance and how, have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and full of mercy. Again, uh, James is reminding us about the importance of having patience when we're going through struggles and trials. 
We need to be patient because the Lord is coming. We need to be patient and stand firm because the Lord is coming near, he says. James knew that persecution was coming to the church. He's warning the church about this, that tough times were coming, and it was going to be a time where they're going to have to be patient and wait upon the Lord and stand firm in their faith. He reminds us that farmers uh, need the rain uh, to be able to have their crop. They need the right weather at the right kind time. When it's harvest time, they don't want big rains. They don't want big snows or anything like that. Uh, because why? That fits into what they're doing as farmers. But they have to be patient about that. Why? Because they're waiting on the harvest that's coming. And so where they're depending, trusting, they're going to get the weather that they need. The prophets were patient uh, in facing suffering because they believed God had something much better for them than this world they were living in. We know a lot of the prophets uh, were martyred. A lot of the prophets lost their life. They were persecuted. Uh, they, were, they were hurt because of their speaking for God. And we know about that, and he's talking about that, talking about how they suffered and persevered through that. And God's talking about our suffering. God's talking about not only about persecution, but about us suffering and how we must wait upon the Lord and be patient waiting on what he will do because God is near. Hebrews 11, if you turn to Hebrews chapter 11, talks about this, I believe. Hebrews chapter 11, about waiting on the Lord. And the Lord has something uh, better for us. For us who are in Christ, the Lord has something uh, greater. Verse 13 from Hebrews chapter 11. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they, and they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the co country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. He's talking about the people in, in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, people who were martyred for their faith, people who struggled because of their faith, people who were persecuted because of their faith. And that's, that's the faith chapter talking about the heroes of the Bible. And he says those people were looking in faith to what God had promised, and many of them didn't see it till after they died. They weren't looking for an earthly home. They were looking for a country that was a heavenly one. They were looking for a city that God had promised them, just as God has promised us. They were patient. They stood firm, even though many of them lost their lives. And God's telling us that we have that same kind of patience in persecution, but also in the pain and the suffering and the illness and maladies of life. He mentions Job. Uh, Job persevered. We know the story of Job. That's an incredible book. If you'll take it in total, that's an incredible book. Why? Because Job is talking about what's happening to him, and he's exposing his heart and his prayers to us. And in doing that, he's questioning what's happening with, between him and God, what's happening to his life, to his family, to the things that he had, even to his health. He's talking to God about that. I think that's great. Why? Because you and I suffer too. You and I have moments where we're struggling. Some of you have dealt with illnesses and hurts for a long, long time. And that wears you down. And God asks us, God asks us to be patient, to wait upon him, to call upon him, to stand firm in our faith. Let this time of suffering help us to grow in Christ, to be stronger in Christ. A lot of people have said that patience is one of those ways that we grow the fastest, is having patience and waiting upon the Lord. Now, I want to finish with Psalm 130, Psalm 130, and God's people said, Amen, stop this thing right now. <laughs> Psalm 130, please turn there, a great chapter. There's a lot of, of places that we could go, but this is one that I like. Uh, Psalm 130 says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. That may be you here today. You're crying out to the Lord. Your hurt is deep. Your pain is deep. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. And God, God hears your cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Amen to that. If God kept a record of my sin, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My 
soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman waiting for the morning, more than the watchman wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love. With him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. What the psalmist says here is he's waiting on the Lord to come help him, take care of him. And he says, what I need to do is be patient. I need to stand firm and be patient. Why? The Lord is near. The Lord is coming. Whatever's happened with you right now, the Lord's coming. My Redeemer lives, and he's on his way. He's on his way to help you, to care for you. Now, I don't know what redemption might be for you. For some of us, I know that when I get ill someday, redemption might be death. It might be death. And I'm looking forward to the day that I can be with the Lord and I won't hurt anymore. For others, it will be healing. For others, it will be the grace that you need to endure. But God is patient, and he wants us to be patient. Patient with others, but also patient in waiting on him. Because the Lord loves you, and the Lord is coming, and the Lord cares about where you are, and the Lord is listening to your prayers, your prayers of faith. Let's stand together and let's pray. Lord, I, I love the way you are, and I love the fact that you are a God of compassion, but you're also a God of patience. And you are waiting for us to follow you, to come to you. You help us to grow up in Christ, even though we fall on our faces so much. Even though we make mistakes we shouldn't make, we say things we shouldn't say. Lord, you're waiting. You're patient. You give us your grace. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be thankful for that uh, attribute of you, but also to be uh, ourselves be patient, be patient with others. Uh, be willing to be long-suffering with those who are growing up in Christ. Be willing to understand that uh, lost people do lost things. We should be surprised about that. We want to introduce them to Christ so they will be redeemed from all those things. So help us, Lord, to be patient. Help us not to give up on people. Help us to, not, to stop praying for people. Help us to continue to encourage them to know Christ. Because we know someday, someday they may repent and come to you. And we're excited about that, Lord. Why? Because we're all looking forward to that country that you have, you have for us. That distant country in heaven. That perfect place that you've got for your people. Until we get there, Lord, we want you to help. Please help us to be patient. Help us to pray. Help us to wait upon the Lord. Help us to act in faith all the time. To stand firm in our resolve towards you. Help us to grow up in Christ, but at the same time, help us to give an example to others how we can be faithful even when we suffer, even when we have pain. We thank you for our faith in Christ. We thank you for our, your love for us. And we ask you, Lord, to bless us as we gather around this table and remember what Christ has given us. I can have great confidence and faith because Jesus died for me. I can have confidence in heaven because he has uh, washed my sins away and have promised me eternal life. Oh, I'm so grateful for that, and it would not have happened if it weren't for what Christ did for me. He let his body be broken. He let his body be pierced. He let his body be beaten for me. He suffered a, a terrible, terrible a time of torture because he loved me and wanted to die for me, wanted to save me. He let his blood be shed, the most precious liquid on the earth. He let it be shed so that that blood might forgive sins. Oh, Lord, I, I just am so grateful for that. And I pray that you'd bless us as we gather around this table and think about what you have done for us. The body was broken, the blood that was shed. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for being obedient to your Father and loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. I want to uh, thank the ladies, uh, all the ladies who put together the thing yesterday. Steve, right. you stayed for the whole thing. Tell me I about that. Did. You know, I'll do anything to get out of uh, doing housework, even spend the entire day with ladies. So, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful well, that was a great sacrifice, Steve. I want to tell you, I'm so proud of you. Burden that I'm willing to bear. So, yeah. yeah, you, yeah. you all, carried that cross all day yesterday. Right. In all seriousness, it was a tremendous event. How many of you ladies attended that yesterday? Just saw. Wasn't it a wonderful event? Yes, okay. Oh. So they had, uh, Kurt, there was, uh, it was a live simulcast, and so that meant that they were live where they were in Nashville, Tennessee, and I think they had about 140 that they allowed uh, to be in that room, and then uh, 49 of the states uh, uh, participated, nine different countries, and so this was a, a big event yesterday, a lot of ladies uh, praising the Lord together, uh, the the Worship was fantastic. Point of Grace did a lot of the uh, concert stuff. The speakers were just tremendous. Uh, so it was a great, Good. great day. So we're looking uh, forward to more events like that. Were they able to reach uh, Cleveland and Detroit? That was a couple they places. They got in there. Yeah, Vermont, Vermont was the state that held out and was not participating. Vermont was, so, huh? I yeah. also have to uh, brag about something else. The brownies yesterday were out of this world. <laughs> they were. And I, I do have one complaint to make. I didn't have any of those, by well, the way. The guy that brought my lunch back to the office there, I didn't even know there were brownies because there wasn't one in the box. And I found out later. So I'm thinking that he just thought, Pastor doesn't need one today. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a bad judgment call. It was. I, I complained loud yeah. enough and got two, though, so it worked no, out pretty yeah. good. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, good, good. Uh, amen to that. All right. I'm glad that the ladies had a great time. And uh, uh, next year we want it to be a little bit longer because some of the guys said they couldn't go golfing and fishing both unless they had <laughs> another hour or two. So please uh, make that happen if you can. Uh, don't forget our Purse Shaw ministry that's going on this week. And I uh, want to encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, they're doing a great ministry. A lot of people have been touched by that. Uh, including me. Uh, I got one at one time, and I just think it's a wonderful thing, and I, I believe that we need to continue to do that. Uh, please don't forget this week we're having the Phil's uh, Ministry Luncheon, and uh, it's going to be at uh, the the City uh, Diner, Bar, and Grill, okay? And if you have questions about that, you call Charlotte Paul about that, and uh, I'm going to be there on the, on the token mail, and so I will be there to make sure our widows are all safe, and so... Uh, keep away all these uh, widowers trying to date our widows so we'll get that nip that in the bud That's okay right. right. uh steve anything else we need to mention hey i was just going to say uh if, in case you did not notice we've got our coffee service back in the fellowship hall again and i yeah. noticed that it is politically correct there's one big pot that has an r and one that has a d and i'm pretty sure that's republican side democrat side of you know that's I'm going to leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> I, I can get in enough trouble by myself. I'm not going to. He said it, That's not it. me. Okay. But do, definitely right. stick around and enjoy the uh, fellowship. And we are coffee. sorry online. <laughs> okay. We're sorry. <laughs> Okay, anything else we need to mention, Steve, that's besides it. the coffee pots? That's it. Well, that's a terrific deal. That's that a terrific is, deal. It really is. I ain't going to lie. I drink out of both of them, though. So it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, bipartisan. All right, right, let's stand together and let's pray. <laughs> Uh, Lord, thank you uh, for the blessings of being in church. We thank you for letting us worship you, and it really is a privilege. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what a, what, a, what a gift it is to be able to come and worship and be with your people and uh, call upon you. Uh, we don't know what a gift it is until we have it taken away because of health or something else. We have a lot of people over the years who've been shut in that just wish they could go to church one Sunday. And so we ask you, Lord, to bless us, help us to be faithful, help us to enjoy this, enjoy being together, but take advantage of our ability to grow as we learn your word and as we worship together. We thank you for letting us gather around this table and also give gifts to you, and we thank you for blessing our church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you all. Have a great day.